Rahim. The topic I'll be talking about is Quran, a divine miracle. And when we talk about a miracle, what does it mean? A miracle is typically considered to be an extraordinary event or phenomena that defies natural laws or what is known as in our Sharia called Khariq al-Ada, which is humanly impossible. And therefore it is attributed to divine intervention. Brothers and sisters, everything about this Quran is miraculous. Just the rhythm, the recitation as we just heard from our beloved Sheikh al Batrawid. The sound is so captivating. How many people would have taken Shahada just by listening to the beautiful recitation of the Quran? And so with this few minutes that I have, we can only talk about three or four points maximum of the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. Perhaps the whole convention will be or can be about the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. And the first point is the literary masterpiece of the Qur'an. It cannot be imitated or replicated. How many verses and chapters were recited in a society, in the Meccan society, in a culture where poets were praised for their eloquence, such as the seven Mu'allaqat. These were seven notable poets in the days of Jahiliyyah, the likes of Imr ibn Qais, Tarafa, Zuhair, Labid, Antara, and so on. Their poems were so powerful that their poems were hung at the Kaaba because of its eloquence. And yet the poets of their time were unable to produce anything like this Quran, even in their speech or in their writing. And so when Walid ibn Mughira, one of the chief poets of Mecca, he heard the Quran, he was so amazed by the language that he recited, that he made a statement that this is such beautiful language. And when Abu Jahl heard that, the pharaoh of this ummah, he said, you have to come up with some, some reason that people will say that this Quran is a word of some jinn and not the word of Allah. And so he did. And we can see that in Surah Al Muddathir. And so this challenge is a challenge until the day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us say if all humanity and jinns were gathered to produce the like of this Quran they could not produce anything like it even if they assist one another forget about the whole Quran 10 chapters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them am yaquluna iftara kul fa'tu bi ashri suwarin mithlihi muftarayat wad'u man istata'tu min dunillahi in kuntum sadiqeen or do they say that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam has invented it bring them 10 chapters like it and call for help whomever you want beside Allah if you're truthful if 10 chapters are too many then bring one chapter like unto it what in kuntum fi rabbi mimma nazzalna ala abadina 
فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you have doubt concerning that which we have sent down to our servant, then produce one surah, one chapter of the Qur'an, the like thereof, and call on your witnesses and your supporters beside Allah if you're truthful. These challenges were not empty words that nobody was paying attention to. Rather, it is these words, it is this Quran that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was calling to Tawheed of Allah, the abolition of idolatry in all its forms, the kind treatment of human beings, especially women and girl children. And it was recited over and over and over so that they can hear the truth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam threatened with this book the whole socio-economic framework of the Meccan society. So it was not just as if they were not paying attention to the Quran, they were. Yet all Quraysh, all they had to do was to crush this whole movement of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by bringing one single chapter that re resemble or challenge the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they could not, and they will never. Surah Masad, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab, what up? Abu Lahab, this surah was recited while he was in Mecca, while he was in his full energy and full uh, force. All he could have said, I am a Muslim, and that surah would have proven wrong. But he could not do that because Allah said so. And because of that power of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one can challenge. And no one in their rightful mind came forward and challenged the Quran. Except one wretched one among them by the name of Musaylama. And Musaylama he said, I am getting revelation too. What was his revelation? He called his revelation, one of them, Surah Al-Divda, the chapter of the frog. You know, I'm from the Caribbean, and we don't say frog in the Caribbean, we say crapo. And crapo is a very, crapo is a very demeaning word to, to describe even the animal or people that you call you're a crapo. So he has a chapter called the chapter of the crapo, of the frog. And he says it goes like this, Ya divda'u bint al-divda'in, naqiyu kam tanaqeen, lal ma'a tukaddireen, wala shariba tamna'een, ra'suka fil ma'i wa dhanubka fitteen. This is what he said he gets his revelation. O frog, daughter of two frogs, clean as you clean. Because there was a myth at that time that frogs clean the water. Neither do you cloud the water, nor do you prevent one who drinks. Your head is in the water and your tail is in the mud. This is his revelation. So it was narrated that one pagan Bedouin Arab was passing and he heard that Musaylama was getting revelation. So he asked Musaylama, are you a prophet too? Do you have what the other prophet has in terms of revelation? Musaylama said, yes, I have Quran. Listen to this. And he recited his version of Surah Al-Fil. What he says, Al-Fil wa ma adraka ma al-Fil. Lahu zallumun tawil, inna dhalika min khalki rabbin al-jaleel. Oh, that elephant. What makes you know what an elephant is? It has a long trunk, and that is from the creation of his Lord, the Majestic. This was his poetry. This pagan Bedouin said to him, Wallahi, you know that I know that you are a liar. 
And so my dear brothers and sisters, since in the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they could not stop this Quran and up until this day, they try whatever means. As Allah tells us, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ and those who disbelieve, they say, listen not to this Quran and make noise in the midst of its recitation that you may overcome. In the former Soviet human sta Union states, the Quran was banned even from people home. They can go to jail if they have a copy of the Quran. But every time they put out the light of the Quran, it gets brighter. Only two days ago, Kir put out a video showing Israeli soldiers burning the Quran. So we say, O oh Pharaoh, O oh Quraysh, go ahead and burn the Quran because every time you burn the Quran, its message gets brighter and brighter. Every time you burn, Every time you burn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, millions of people learn about Islam and millions of people come to Islam. So go ahead. <laughs> Secondly, the historical details of the Quran, that the historical information that could not have been known at the time of revelation, for example, the Quranic narration of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. The ruler of Egypt at that time in the Quran was never referred to as Pharaoh. He was referred to as the king. Whereas in the biblical version, the same story was revealed, but it was revealed that the Pharaoh, that the time of that ruler was a Pharaoh. And what is significant about that? Because the king of Egypt in the time of Prophet Yusuf was not a pharaoh. Historians found much later that during the era of Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him, the rulers of Egypt were an invading force from Palestine and hence they were called Hyksos, literally mean foreign kings and not pharaoh. Later on in history, time of Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the ruler was a pharaoh and so the Quran referred to the correct title for each one. Not to mention Haman, Pharaoh's chief builder. It is only mentioned in the Quran and not in the previous scriptures. Until the 19th century when the name surfaced Haman in those archaic writing and they found out that Haman was actually the builder of Pharaoh. And so my dear brothers and sisters, over and over we find the correct information in the Quran and as opposed to the previous scriptures. Thirdly, that Allah promised to preserve the Quran. The Quran today is exactly as it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. Certainly we have revealed the reminder and surely we are the one to protect it. The consistency of the Quran, oral, printed, transmission is firm. Every oral transmission, tra transmission across this globe is consistent and they are compatible with the written form of the Quran. There is no part that is edited, that is lost, that is changed, that is forgotten, that is altered by any human being over the course of history. Is it possible that an illiterate man from the seventh century Arabia could write in this linguistic masterpiece intricate details of knowledge, complex theology, that lasted unaltered for over 1400 years? Are, and there are no contradictions in this Quran? And the Quran was just fictional information? Allah says, Afalayata Dabbaroon al Quran, 
walau kana min inde ghayri Allah la wajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira do they not reflect on the Quran had it been from anyone else other than Allah they would have surely found many contradictions and surely after 14 and a half centuries when there was no science discovery there was information these information were only known in the last century or so and then they are beginning to discover what was there in the Quran over 1400 years ago in the field of astronomy biology oceanography the cosmos that they the, the Cosmos is expanding, the universe is expanding, embryology, geologic sciences, mountains as stabilizers, iron from outer space, atoms and subatom particles, the water cycle of evaporation, cloud formation, rainfall, honeybee, and a long list that we can go on and on and on about the miraculous information that is there in the Quran. And finally, about Allah, perhaps one of the greatest of all is that the Quran elevates whatever it touches. Angel Jibreel was a carrier of the Quran and he was known as the Archangel. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given this Quran and he was noted and recognized and known as the greatest messenger and the greatest of human being. The movement of the Quran in Laylatul Qadr from Lawhil Mahfud to the lower heaven ha happened in the night of Qadr and that night became the greatest night of the whole year. It was revealed in the month of Ramadan and Ramadan happens to be the greatest month of the year. It was revealed in Mecca and Medina and these are known as the greatest cities in the world. It was revealed to this Ummah, you and I, and all those before us and all who will come in, uh, ahead of us. And it changed their state from humiliation to glory and honor, to inferiority to excellence, from defeat to victories, from fears and insecurities to prosperity, from wars to peace, from being oppressive and unjust to being the symbol of justice. So my dear brothers and sisters, this Ummah today, you and I, will not be able to be elevated by this Quran unless this Quran goes beyond our ears and start to go into our hearts and into our actions. As Imam Malik said, لا يسلحو آخر هذه الأمة إلا ما أصلها أولها That the ending of this Ummah will not be rectified except that which rectified the beginning of this ummah. And so my dear brothers and sisters, this Quran is a guidance and it is meant to prevail, not by my choice or, or your choice, but by the one who sent this word down to this ummah, this final ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, huwalladhi arsala rasulahu bilhuda wa dinil haqqi liyudhirahu wa la dini kulli it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to manifest it over all religion. Even those who associate partners with Allah may dislike it and they will continue to dislike it and the Quran will continue to prevail by the power of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that Quran touches not only our ears but our hearts and in our action and we will see that power of the Quran that will bring back this ummah where it's supposed to be. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.